Okay, if you're studying thermodynamics, uh, this is a question which uh, you must be having in your mind as to when we're dealing with uh, questions uh, and when we're using different laws, why do we prefer to use the Kelvin scale um, and not the Celsius scales? Uh, meaning that why do we convert the temperature uh, from Celsius to uh, Kelvin scale? Meaning that if you're given T1 temperature as 20 degrees Celsius and T2 says 120 degrees Celsius, we convert this into Kelvin scale by adding 273, so this will become 293 Kelvin and this becomes 393 Kelvin. So what, what is there in the Kelvin scale which, uh, uh, which because of which we use it uh, while solving questions on thermodynamics and when we're dealing with uh, gases? Uh, I'm sure you have some background about how the uh, Celsius scale came into play and how the Kelvin scale came into play. And I'm assuming that you know that Celsius scale is between 0 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius and uh, this was given by Lord Celsius and uh, it's rather an arbitrary scale uh, from the freezing point of water to the uh, boiling point of water right? and uh, whereas uh, the Kelvin scale comes from uh, absolute zero right, which we call as zero Kelvin right, and goes upwards right? and we, uh, the degrees are same here it is every uh, we have one degree rise so similarly over here also we have one degree rise but basically these two points are different this is zero degree celsius which is the freezing point of water whereas zero kelvin and i'm, sh I'm sure you have studied absolute zero right. and to give you a little bit of background about the kelvin scale temperature is actually a measure of energy of the molecules moving around in a substance right so if you have a gas over here uh, these molecules are moving randomly in different directions and the total energy which we call as the internal energy denoted by u is a reflection of temperature or temperature rather is a reflection of the internal energy of the molecules right whereas this the celsius scale is based on the freezing point and the boiling point of water arbitrarily chosen and has this scale has less to do with energy i won't say that this is not nothing to do with energy but it has less to do with energy because this has been arbitrarily chosen uh, what i mean is that in in the case of uh, kelvin scale zero kelvin absolute zero is associated with zero energy and as you go up one Kelvin and so on, the internal energy keeps on increasing. And there is a straight line relationship between the temperature and energy. Right? So if I plot a graph of, say, uh, energy, uh, let's say internal energy denoted by U, and on this scale, let's say I have Kelvin temperature. Let's say this is 50, 100, 150, 200, say 250, 300, and 350 Kelvin. In case of uh, Kelvin scale, because I have taken a Kelvin scale over here and I have inner, internal energy over here, the starting point will be this, because at zero Kelvin, zero Kelvin, the internal energy is zero. Right? And the graph goes as a straight line up. Right? And what we observe is that if I look at two any two temperatures, let us say 50 Kelvin over here, at 50 Kelvin, the particular gas would have this much amount of energy, let us call this X amount of energy. Uh, and when I take it at 100 Kelvin, right, which is double this, right, this would be 2x. So if the temperature doubles up, the energy also doubles up. Whereas if I try to plot the Celsius temperature on this very scale, I'll see that the, this does not happen. Say for example, the temperature rises from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. So this would be 273 Kelvin, so the 283 Kelvin, and this would be 293 Kelvin. And if I try to get it over here, 10 degrees Celsius is 283 Kelvin, so somewhere over here, let me extend this a little bit over here, 283 is would be somewhere over here. So the energy associated would be Y over here and with 293, 293 would be still closer over here and this would be the energy associated with 293 Kelvin. So if you look at Celsius, you feel the, temp the temperature has doubled and therefore the energy has doubled. Whereas we can very clearly see that the amount of energy for at 283 is this, whereas the amount of energy for 293 Kelvin, 293 Kelvin is this. So there's no, there's no proportionate increase. The increase in energy is very, very limited. And if you look at the temperatures in terms of Kelvin, we can say the temp increase in temperature is very small, it's only 10 Kelvin, and which explains this relatively small increase in energy. And that's another reason why we prefer to use the Kelvin scale and not the uh, Celsius scale. The another point is uh, starting from the lowest possible limit, 
right? If you start from the lowest possible limit of any physical quantity, that makes a lot of sense, right? From a mathematic pers pers perspective. For example, if you look at, when we are looking at distance and displacement, we always start with uh, zero displacement, zero displacement, right? Or the reference point or the origin, right? Similarly, when we are looking at time, we always start from what is the starting point and when time equal to zero. In fact, in most of the things we measure, zero upwards. However, the Celsius and uh, even the Fahrenheit scale both start from an arbitrary point uh, somewhere in the middle of the energy spectrum. If this is, say for example, this zero, absolute zero, and you know it goes maybe in the direction of infinity. In case of Celsius scale, you know, we're starting somewhere in between arbitrarily and this is zero degree Celsius, this is 100 degree Celsius. So if you look at the entire thermal energy spectrum, ideally we should be starting with zero energy over here zero energy and then moving upwards that makes more sense uh, from a mathematical perspective and uh, that's what the Kelvin scale addresses that issue by setting the lowest possible limit it sets the lowest possible limit of the internal energy to the bottom most point of the scale zero Kelvin and that's why it becomes easier to use that uh, and it also makes more logical sense if you use uh, Kelvin scale. Now, one final point is that um, one of the advantages of using the Kelvin scale is that you don't deal with negative numbers. For example, if the temperature of an object is uh, on a Celsius scale, it can be minus 10 degrees Celsius. Right? Whereas if you convert this into, two, into Kelvin scale, 263 Kelvin. Since it starts from zero, there are no negative numbers. That helps because there are times when we have to use a, a ratio of temperatures, for example, T1 upon T2. And if the temperature is, say, 30 degrees Celsius, or, and here it is minus 10 degrees Celsius, then you have with a negative ratio. So the use of uh, uh, Kelvin scale also avoids that because if you convert this into Kelvin, this uh, 30 would become 303 Kelvin and this would become 263 Kelvin and you would get a positive ratio. So the Kelvin scale also helps us in avoiding negative numbers. Of course, that is not the primary reason for that, right? But that's also another thing which uh, we come across. And supposing the temperature would be zero degrees Celsius, supposing T2 is zero degrees Celsius, then T1 upon T2 would be 30 upon zero and that would mathematically is infinity. So the Kelvin scale also helps us avoid all these kind of situations, right? And this is the reason, or these are the reasons why we always prefer to use the Kelvin scale uh, over the Celsius scale when we're dealing with uh, thermodynamics. Thank you.